Hey friends, Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti. And uh, what did you? What was your nickname a minute ago? You just said Captain Negative, reporting for duty. And who's he? What's my nickname? You did ask me last time. Do I have a tagline? I actually do. Okay, oh, I'd like it? to hear. So this. you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have this saying. I need to have some T-shirts made. It says, "I ain't, I ain't hating. I'm just stating." I ain't hating, but I ain't, okay. I so just that's how facts. I feel about what I said I about state baseball, facts, Nuno. So here's what, get upset that's how I feel that. about what I said about baseball. I could be positive, but. Here. They ain't giving me a lot. You know, there's a good cop, bad cop routine in movies, right? right? I feel like I'm the good cop today. You guys are the bad cop because negative Nancy's on the fan show. Boom. Kelly Adams, Kevin Ross, you Gotta guys. Have a role. Everybody needs a role. I fulfilled mine. You're like, you destroyed all of Aggie athletics today. I did. You did. And are they you, deserved it. Are you not aware of uh, women's tennis? No, actually, they're doing very well. Okay. I have women's actually golf? Mm hmm. Okay, you didn't like the basketball season because the way it ended, but they did finish second in the SEC. And again, the word I used was disappointing. Mm -hmm. And I think disappointing if, finish, amazing year. But I think overall, we would classify the season as a disappointment. Softball's been I would. really good to start. I, I I'm super happy about softball being good. Oh, you talk about you. you I am. We I should have said that. I should have said that. Women's basketball was supposed to be down this year, and they were they down were down until when? <laughs> until when? the end. Until the, the end. Until the SEC. Until the SEC. They right? did look good in the SEC. All right. When they got some bodies back, they did look good. So. Pretend like you didn't hear this whole thing because you're going to hear part of it coming up on uh, Tech Tax Rewind. We had these jokers on. We had uh, Stephen McGee and OB talking about the Masters. We had uh, Schloss on. He got us ready for the series against Auburn. John Sheshik got us ready for more of that series. He had his perspective. John was very good. And Alyssa Orange talking about a little Arkansas spring football preview, a team that none of these guys are really sold on. What kind of team are they going to be? New offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. K.J. Jefferson's back, but a brand new offensive K.J. Jefferson and his fragile ankles. And uh, hopefully he makes a lot of turnovers. Here's the rewind. Hey, man, yeah, I know you're a big golf guy. What, what, I assume you're going to be paying quite a bit of attention to it. Absolutely. Are you guys not? Of course we are. Freaking Sam Bennett, more right, Tiger. Good. Let's go. Absolutely. It's going to be a great week. Uh, heck, it's rainy and thunderstormy, so it's, it's a good time to be inside watching some golf instead of out there playing. But uh, I always look forward to this golf tournament every year yeah i uh it's i'm not a big watcher of golf if you will i do watch i love watching the uh the the, the opens the uh, the majors with my dad and we we do watch the masters and sometimes it's on easter and we get to watch it it's good times uh, what about uh this question we have for the show Stephen? who would be in your four foursome when it comes to uh, you're the caddy, let's say you're 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 not playing, you're just hanging out with a bunch of celebrities. Who would be in your foursome? Oh, um, besides you two, obviously. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go. I definitely want Tiger in there. Um, I would love to play golf with Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley. Just comes to mind because he's such a goofball and he's hilarious. Um. I'd probably throw in, I'd probably throw in Tom Brady in there. It's just like we're going to stick with pure sports figures. Um, I think that'd be a pretty fun foursome. Get a little bit of uh, really good golf combined with really bad golf and a lot of laughs, which is what I enjoy. The more I think about it, I'd have to give some thought to this, but I think I'd like to find four people, two to each that just literally detest each other. So maybe you know, they'd get into fights and I'd just sit but, back and watch it. Who, who's Brooks Kepka hate? He's got a hate thing going with somebody. Who is that? He's, is it Bryson DeChambeau? Steven Bryson. Jay? Yeah, but it's one thing to tell him, and it's another thing for the player to believe that it, they need to stop thinking yeah. so much. Yeah, so that's the, that's the difference between being, between, you know, uh, let me start off by saying I'm a fan too. I'm a fan of, you know, the football team. I'm a fan of the basketball team. I'm, I mean, I'm a fan of the you know, uh, of, of, of major league teams, and and it's and what but what, what you don't know is the makeup of the player. You don't know what he's going through. You don't know as a fan. You don't know the behind the scenes issues, whether it be a family issue or something like that. And so <clears throat> the, the physical part is that's the eight. You know, that's the easy. That's the easy part to coach. It's, it's the mental. It's keeping them confident. It's keeping them challenged. It's keeping them prepared and having them in their own mind finding that fine line between uh, competing and and wanting it versus doing too much. You know, and, and in today's society with social media and different things that way, 
uh, very, very often players identify who they are with what they do, which creates huge, huge problems. In other words, you know, if you have a player who isn't succeeding on the baseball field, <clears throat> then he's, he's extremely anxious, depressed, like versus being able to leave it at the field and move on with the rest of his day. <clears throat> and that's, you know, mental illness is a really, it's a very, very real thing. And today's amateur athlete has to deal with things that you and I, I mean, I'm 52, I'm way older than you, but I mean, you and I didn't have to deal with these things nearly as much. And, uh, you know, uh, that's what we spend all of our time doing is, is finding finding ways to keep guys confident through adversity. Every Friday this year, uh, we haven't had that yet. What, what, what has jumped out at you about Nathan Detmer? Well, again, he's a Friday night guy, and so he's going to have to pitch against the best that the SEC has to offer. And thus far, you know, a couple of those guys, Keith LSU and then Tennessee's guy, you know, those are going to be high in MLB guys in the near future. So he's going to have to match that level of intensity. And really, from a mental perspective, David, he's going to have to match, match them pitch for pitch. You have to have a lot of belief in yourself. He's got the stuff, it's not an issue. We've seen him perform on a big stage, like you just mentioned. But he's going to have to really have that mental aspect and confidence to go into that game saying that he can not only compete with these guys, you know, his counterparts on the mound from the other SEC schools on Friday nights, but uh, he can beat them. So that's a big hurdle for Nathan to get through this year. I have not you know, written him off for the year. I still think he's going to have some big outings for the Aggies. I don't think it's anything mechanical. I don't think there's any issues with him. I just think he has to get that belief system going, go out there and get the ball and take him. And just do what he does. John, to me, it can be as simple as one good outing could string together several outings, right? Like, I mean, look, I'm hoping that Chris Cortez, the one we saw against Texas State, that's the Chris Cortez we might get for the remainder of the season. Oh, that's exactly right. And you saw, I saw Jace Hutchins, who, who hasn't gotten playing this year due to injury, but I saw him bounce off the mound on Tuesday after Cortez threw that inning. And that confidence, not only for the individual that's pitching, but from the teammates, their teammates feel that. They see it. And they know Cortez has to be a guy for them. And to see him do that on the mound on Tuesday was, was a pleasant sign for Texas A&M. And, and like you said, one outing is all it takes to get that confidence rolling. The stuff's there for Cortez and for Detmer. They just have to believe in it and trust it and go do it. So I'm looking at the schedule. There's some pockets that could be interesting. I, I don't think the non-conference yeah. is that difficult. But BYU, always a challenge. Kent State mm -hmm. is a team that Arkansas should should have no problem with, but yet they they can sling it as well. When you look at the mm -hmm. schedule, w where do you see the potential pitfalls, sure. especially considering it is the SEC? Yeah, absolutely. And and you've probably got it in front of you, so you're going to help me. But there is a four game road stretch. I think they go they play A and M on the road, uh, always in Arlington, and then they're on the road four game. I think the whole month of October. If I'm if I'm thinking correctly, so I'm looking and at it. That's September 23rd. They're at LSU. September 30th, okay. Dallas for the uh, A&M game. Then Ole Miss. Then mm -hmm. Alabama. They're not home, yeah. so they go basically September 23rd to October 21st on the road. That's that's it. That road stretch is going to be brutal. And just get through that and find out where you are and assess yourself after that because that's pretty much the midway point. And then I think because you're home most of the rest of the season, it's going to be a little bit easier, but you got to get through that road gauntlet. So last year when we spoke, I feel, and tell me if I'm wrong here, that the vibe was or the feeling was nine or 10 win team. This is what they expect from Arkansas. Is there still that same kind of expectation considering the way last season went, or is it more like eight or nine wins is what we feel is appropriate for this squad? I think it's both, but I think you've got to look at it from a, uh, a fan perspective is nine to 10 wins in Sam Pittman's fourth season. And this is basically going to say you've now made changes to your coaching staff with your coordinators. Can you get the job done? Can you get nine to 10 wins in year four from a football perspective? If you're Sam Pittman, eight, nine with the season, with the reality of knowing the schedule you have, I think that that's fair. All right, friends. I think we can call each other friends, right? We're, we're, even though negative, we'll be Nancy, friends. negative oh, Nancy and captain negative, right? Just stating obvious facts. <laughs> if it's the truth, that doesn't make me negative. It just makes me honest. All right, who was the most negative on the show today? 
write it on the comments below. What else do they need to do? Uh, subscribe. So that way they can hear more of my takes. Like it. Because his takes are likable. And share. Share it with your friends. It's Tech Rewind. See you next time.